Library Connections is a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video series hosted by SSCL librarian Linda Reimer. That's me. Library Connections videos make their debut on Facebook Fridays at 1 p.m. and afterwards may be found on the Southeast Devon County Library's YouTube page. This is Library Connections number 61. It's the Friday, July 16th, 2021 edition of Library Connections. Kicking things off with the top five fiction bestsellers of the week from the New York Times. At number one, The Paper Palace by Miranda Cowley Heller. After an extramarital dalliance, Ellie must choose between her husband and her childhood love. At number two, Nine Lives by Danelle Steele. After tragedy upsets her stable family life, Maggie must decide if she will take a risk with a thrill seeker. At number three, Falling by T.J. Newman. A kidnapper, Piper likes that one by the way. Yes, do you like falling, Piper? She likes falling. So I digress. Back to our number three bestseller for the week, Falling by T.J. Newman. A kidnapper demands that a pilot crash his plane with 144 passengers on board to save his family. And I think it's safe to say at least our three first three titles are all dramatic, aren't they, Piper? Huh? At number four, The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. Hannah Hall discovers truths about her missing husband and bonds with his daughter from a previous relationship. And at number five, The People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Opposites Poppy and Alex meet to vacation together one more time in hopes of saving their relationship. Wow, and we've got some neat mysteries and dramatic titles in the top five there. So moving along to the top five nonfiction bestsellers of the week. And Piper's leaving the room now, so I don't think she likes the nonfiction titles as much, but that's okay. If she's a cat, she's allowed. And I'm digressing. At number one, How I Saved the World by Jesse Waters. The Fox News host recounts his career and prescribes ways to defend against what he considers left-wing radicalism. At number two, This Is Your Mind on Plants by Michael Pollan. A look at arbitrary beliefs surrounding opium, caffeine, and mescaline, which are derived from plants. At number three, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How trauma affects the body and mind and innovative treatments for recovery. At number three, Trejo by Danny Trejo with Donald Logue. The screen actor describes how his past, which includes heroin addiction and prison time, has informed some of his roles. And at number five, Killing the Mob by Bill O'Reilly and Martin Duggard. The tenth book in the conservative commentator's Killing series looks at organized crime in the United States during the 20th century. Our first reading recommendation for this week is the new Kathleen O'Neill gear novel, The Ice Lion. With this engrossing series launch, Gear conjures a vivid post-apocalyptic world. It's been almost a thousand years since glowing green zyme covered the oceans and Earth iced over. Now, the world is divided between the sea lion people and the rust people 
enemy factions spurred on in their enmity by the dog soldiers. Friends Quiller and Lynx are sea lion people. After lions attack and kill Lynx's wife, but leave Lynx mysteriously untouched, Quiller must save the hapless Lynx from being exiled for his cowardice. She does so by convincing their community that Nightbreaker, a legendary giant lion, must have chosen Lynx for some special purpose. Instead of exile, Lynx is ordered on a quest to find Nightbreaker and learn why he was spared. Quiller promises to join him, only to be assigned to a scouting party instead, leaving her torn between her desire to protect Lynx and her duty to her children, who will be threatened if she disobeys. Meanwhile, Lynx encounters elderly Dr. John Ericke, who impossibly seems to be a survivor of pre-Zeme society. And his quest takes a turn as he learns the truth of how his homeland came to be. This mesmerizing adventure through a world destroyed by climate change is sure to have readers hooked. And that is the publisher's weekly review. And that's definitely on my rating list. I can't wait to read it. I just have to finish the book I'm reading now. And speaking of what I'm reading right now, I am thoroughly enjoying our second recommended read of the week. It's the new Catherine Addison novel. It's called The Witness for the Dead. And despite the title, this is actually a character study in a fantasy novel's clothing. The author and the name Catherine Addison is a pseudonym, but she wrote another novel in this universe several years ago called The Goblin Emperor. And again, more of a character study with a fantasy setting. And I say fantasy, but really the novels could be set in about 1870 Europe. Anyway, I'm thoroughly enjoying this book, The Witness for the Dead. And let me tell you a little bit about it. Catherine Addison returns to the glittering world she created for her beloved novel, The Goblin Emperor, in this standalone sequel. When the young half-goblin emperor, Maya, sought to learn who had set the bombs that killed his father and half-brothers, he turned to an obscure resident of his father's court a prelate of Ulysses and a witness for the dead. Thera Kelahar found the truth, though it did him no good to discover it. He lost his place as a retainer of his cousin, the former empress, and made far too many enemies among the many factions vying for power in the new court. The favor of the emperor is a dangerous coin. Now, Kelahar lives in the city of Amalo, far from the court, though not exactly in exile. He has not escaped from politics, but his position gives him the ability to serve the common people of the city, which is his preference. He lives modestly, but his decency and fundamental honesty will not permit him to live quietly. As a witness for the dead, he can sometimes speak to the recently dead, see the last thing they saw, know the last thought they had, and experience the last thing they felt. It is his duty to use that ability to resolve disputes, to ascertain the interest of the dead, and to find the killers of the murdered. Now Kelahar's skills lead him out of the quiet and into a morass of treachery, murder, and injustice. No matter his own background with the Imperial House, Kelahar will stand with the commoners 
and possibly find a light in the darkness. Catherine Addison has created a fantastic world for these books, wide and deep and true. And I would agree with that. I think they're great books. The Goblin Emperor, which is several years old, but you can request that through Starcat, and now The Witness for the Dead. Moving along to our audiobook recommendations for this week, I'm going to recommend the first book in a cozy mystery series. It's called Aged for Murder, which is difficult to see on the photo here, but that's the title of it. The author is Fiona Grace, and the audio is narrated by Quinn Francis. When Olivia Glass, age 34, concocts an ad for a cheap wine that propels her advertising company to the top, she is ashamed by her own work. Yet, she's offered the promotion she's always dreamed of. Olivia, at a crossroads, realizes this is not the life she signed up for. Worse, when Olivia discovers her longtime boyfriend, just about to propose, has been cheating on her. And she realizes it's time for a major life change. Olivia has always dreamed of moving to Tuscany, living a simple life, and starting her own vineyard. When her longtime friend messages her about a Tuscan cottage available, Olivia can't help but wonder, is it fate? Hilarious, packed with travel, food, wine, twists and turns, romance, and her newfound animal friend, and centering around a baffling small town murder that Olivia must solve, aged for death, is an unputdownable cozy that will keep you laughing late into the night. And that sounds like a perfect summer read and listen. Our second audiobook recommendation for this week is the novel One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. In her 20s, Emma Blair marries her high school sweetheart, Jesse. They build a life for themselves far away from the expectations of their parents and the people of their hometown. They travel the world together, living life to the fullest. On their first wedding anniversary, Jesse is on a helicopter over the Pacific when it goes missing. And just like that, Jesse is gone forever. Emma quits her job and moves home in an effort to put her life back together. Years later, now in her 30s, Emma runs into an old friend Sam and finds herself falling in love again. When Emma and Sam get engaged, it feels like Emma's second chance at happiness. That is until Jesse is found. He's alive and he's been trying all these years to come home to her. So this is a dramatic romance novel, probably more drama than romance, but I think it's an appropriate one to recommend this summer because the author has had several huge hits recently, including this summer's Malibu Rising and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo from 2017 and Daisy Jones and the Six, which came out in 2019. And if you like audios, there are a number of her audios available through Hoopla. Our first streaming recommendation for this week is the new concert documentary, Summer of Soul, or When the Revolution Could Not Be Televised. It's directed by a pure Questlove Thompson and features fantastic music from a number of artists, including B.B. King, Nina Simone, Stevie Wonder, and many others. During the summer of 1969, the same year as the Woodstock and Altamont Music Festivals, Harlem hosted a six-week outdoor concert series featuring some of the most popular R&B, jazz, and gospel acts of the day. 
those shows were filmed, but the footage sat in a basement for 50 years until the producers of the documentary Summer of Soul and its director Questlove Thompson bought the rights and assembled a picture that can stand with the great concert movies of the era. The performances by the likes of Nina Simone, Stevie Wonder, Gladys Knight, Sly and the Family Stone, B.B. King and more are electrifying. But Questlove and his team also made the smart decision to interview some of the surviving participants and audience members who talk about the spirit in the air that summer and are woven seamlessly and artfully into the songs. And that is the New York Times overview. That's going to be a great concert documentary, which seems to have been an overlooked gem for many years. Good thing we get a chance to watch it now. Our second streaming recommendation for this week is the new film Gunpowder Milkshake, available through Netflix. And it has an all-star cast, including Karen Gillian, Angela Bassett, and Michelle Yeoh. The film is directed by Navot Papashito. It's hard to beat the cast for this stylish action comedy about a skilled assassin named Sam, who tries to protect a child from her mob associates with the help of a team of skilled and deadly women. Paul Giamatti plays a criminal kingpin, while Angela Bassett, Michelle Yeoh, Carla Gugino, and Lena Headey play the ladies who help Sam on her mission. Gunpowder Milkshake was co-written and directed by Navit Papashito, who has previously impressed genre film fans with his horror movies Rabies and Big Bad Wolves. This new picture has a flashy look and a pulpy premise like a cross between John Wick and Kill Bill. And that's the New York Times overview. That too sounds like the perfect movie to watch during the summertime. And our Hoopla recommendation for this week is the movie 50 is the New 30 from 2017. It's about a woman who at the age of 50 moves back in with her parent after her husband leaves her for a younger woman and as you might imagine at that point she reflects on her life and decides that 50 is indeed the new 30. This uh, film is of course a romance comedy and just a heads up it is a French film so there are English subtitles but the dialogue is in French and it's kind of perfect watching for you know a hot summer afternoon when you want to sit in front of the AC or the fan and just relax. If you have questions about this weekly video cast, let me know. You can send an email to me at rhymerl at stls.org and I'll get back to you. Again, that's R-E-I-M-E-R-L at stls.org. And on a current library hours note, the library is now open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and we are closed on Sundays. The library's website, which offers a whole host of information about the library, upcoming programs and services, can be found at ssclibrary.org. StarCat and its companion app, BookMine. StarCat is the catalog of physical library materials available to all card holders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library System, better known as STLS. This system encompasses all the public libraries in Steuben, Chemung, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny Counties. You can find StarCat online at starcat.stls.org, or you can download the BookMine app from your app store. And BookMine is spelled B-O-O-K M Y like my and E. The digital catalog 
and its companion apps, Libyan Overdrive, offer cardholders access to ebooks, downloadable audiobooks, and a handful of streaming videos. The digital catalog is found online at stls.overdrive.com. You can download the Libby or Overdrive app to your mobile device to access content. The difference is that Libby is the app for newer devices, so if you have a newer phone or tablet, use Libby. If you have an older device or a Kindle tablet that takes apps, you want the Overdrive app. And like StarCat, the digital catalog offers content to all cardholders within the Southern Tier library system. Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features ebooks, comic books, full length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout for Southeast Dominion County Library cardholders with a maximum of six checkouts per month. You can find the Hoopla catalog online at hoopladigital.com or download the Hoopla app to your mobile device or smart TV. Communicating with the library. If you have questions about library materials or services or anything else library wise, you are welcome to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. The library's phone number is area code 607-936-3713. Again, that's area code 607-936-3713. You can also connect with the library via social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Library blogs, we have five of them. We have the Book Club for Adults blog, which is found at ssclbook.club and offers information on, you guessed it, the monthly Book Club for Adults. We have the Corning NY History blog, which offers weekly postings showing photos of our area way back in the day. We have the Creation Stationery blog, which is the companion blog to the library's makerspace. So there's creative postings there. We have Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells. That one's found at storymusing.blogspot.com. And then Tech and Book Talk, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory blog with occasionally helpful how-to tech tips thrown in. That's found at ssctech.com. And briefly, here are references of the week. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Goodbye and have a great day.